Every surface is defined by its edges. If I erase one of these edges, the surface goes away, and I can recreate it by healing the surface. I'm going to reverse this face. I can subdivide this face into two faces by drawing a line that goes across. It automatically breaks the surface into two pieces. Notice that this inner edge that's on the surface is represented by a thin line, and these outer edges are thicker. These are called profile edges when they're shown in bold. The thickness of the profiles is set in the style window. You can set it right here. You can even toggle the profiles off so that everything appears thin, but then you won't get that visual distinction between edges on surface and profiles. We can fatten these up if we want to emphasize them, and that might be good for a visual style, but I find that when I'm modeling I want these fairly thin, so I leave the profile set to two or three. You can create an edge on a surface directly by drawing a line from one edge to another and then we don't have these hanging chads that we have to later erase. You can also draw a line within a surface, but it appears in bold to indicate that it's a profile edge. It's a free-floating edge, not connected to the surface. It's only later if I decide to connect this profile line to the surface with additional edges that it will become part of the surface. Now this subdivides the surface into another surface, and I can push and pull that up if I so choose. If I wanted to turn this rectangle into a window frame, I could do it manually by drawing four edges and connecting their points, but this is really kind of a tedious way to go, because I have to do a lot of drawing. And I don't have the ability to keep all of these distances the same unless I use guides. And again, there are more steps involved. Now I could push pull this up and have a frame. A more efficient way to draw a window frame is to use the offset tool. But before I do that, I'll push pull this up to create a box. As soon as you select the offset tool, surfaces start highlighting. I'm not clicking or dragging, I'm just moving the cursor. And this tells you which surface you're going to be offsetting edges onto. I'll click once, and you can see this preview of the edges that I'm offsetting. I'm offsetting the edges that define this surface. If I click again, I set the contours in. Let me undo. You have to be somewhat careful with this tool, because there's only a moment there where you have an ability to set the dimension. I'll click, and then look in the measurements toolbar. There's a value given. I'll type in one foot and press return. And the lines are immediately dimensioned so that we now have a one foot frame going around on this surface. We've subdivided the surface into two pieces. I'll double click on this surface to use the same value. Then I'll push pull this surface through the box to the other side. And I'll do the same thing here down to this point. I'll delete this surface. We now have a box with two cross members that go across. When I first started using SketchUp, I remember being confused by the offset tool because I was coming from the perspective of an AutoCAD user. In AutoCAD, the offset tool is used to duplicate edges a preset distance, and it's used quite frequently in AutoCAD to draft plans. In SketchUp, the offset tool is something different altogether. Notice that you cannot offset free floating profile edges like this one. Offset is only used to create interior edges on existing surfaces. If you want a tool that works somewhat like the AutoCAD offset tool, there's a Ruby script called DLINE, and it mimics the functionality of the double line lisp routine in AutoCAD. You can find it in the Ruby library depot. When it comes to curved surfaces, we're kind of at a loss in SketchUp to create edges on them. I mean, you can create a vertical edge, no problem. But when you try to create an edge that goes across a curve, it doesn't really work. It goes through the volume of the object. It doesn't go on the surface. If you try to draw a circle and place it on a curved surface, it may look okay from one angle, when you rotate around, you'll realize that it's planar. 
it does not wrap around onto the curved surface at all. Fredo has written another great script called Tools on Surface, which allows you to draw edges directly on curved surfaces. I already have it loaded, so I'll go ahead and open the Surface Operations tool palette. And while I'm at it, I'll open up Joint Push Pull, because these two sets of tools really work together. Tools on Surface are perfect for creating window and door openings in curved walls. For example, draw a circle with radius 20 feet. Give it quite a few segments. Let's type in 60S to set segments for this curved room. Use the Offset tool and offset the edge inward a distance of 2 feet. And then delete the inner portion. Push-pull the ring up to a height of 12 feet. Let's take a look at this toolbar. You have the Line on Surface tool, Rectangle on Surface, and so on. You can create all of these different shapes on a surface. I'll start by using the Arc tool. I'll click a point right about here, another point over in this area, and then I'll set the curvature of the arc by clicking a third point. Now this arc is actually a curved entity that exists in the surface of this curved wall. So it's really quite a sophisticated thing. I'll use the Line on Surface tool to draw a line vertically down here, and I'll do it again on the other side. Now I want to lock this inference in the blue direction, so when it highlights in blue, I'll hold the Shift key down, and I can be sure that I'm getting a vertical line. It subdivided this surface. If this is going to become a door opening, then I need to push that through. But remember, the push-pull tool won't work, because it's a curved surface. So we have to use the Joint Push-Pull tool. I'll push it back, and then I'll set the distance at 2 feet, and press Return again. It works except for the fact that it did not delete this inner surface. I need to select that and delete that manually. There's also a construction point here at the center point of this arc, which we can delete if we want to. Next on the agenda is to create a rectangular window adjacent to this door opening. This tool works a little bit differently than the rectangle tool does in SketchUp. With this tool, we need to start in the middle of the window. I'll click a point and move the cursor over horizontally. Before I click again, I'll type in a value of 4 feet. This will make an 8 foot wide window. Then I can move the cursor up and you can see what's happening. I'll type in 3 feet in the height and that will make a 6 foot high window. So now we have these contour lines that exist on the surface of the curved wall. And again, we can use Joint Push Pull to give us the window opening. Pre-select the surface, use Joint Push Pull, push it back, type in 2 feet, enter, enter, and then delete the inner surface. Again, we have a construction point at the center of the window. The softening isn't done correctly here. We need to touch this up with the eraser tool by holding down Option Shift to reclaim these edges as crisp edges. Just to show you, you can also have some pretty outlandish shapes here that are very easy to create. Here I'll make a pentagonal window in the same fashion that I made the rectangular one. And then I just need to touch it up with Eraser using Option Shift to turn off softening on all of these edges. Now we have a form here that would be very difficult to create in any other way. The last thing I'll point out about Tools on Surface is the Offset Contour on Surface tool. This is analogous to the SketchUp Offset tool, except that this one works on curved surfaces. Because we have such a complex geometry going here, we'll give this tool a little help by pre-selecting the surface and edge that we're interested in. And then we'll go up here and select the tool. That limits the amount of calculation that has to happen. We can click here and offset a contour. Then of course I can go back, let me zoom in a little more, select this surface, joint push pull it out a little bit to create a frame. Let's make it just two inches out. 
And then I'll go in with the eraser tool and get rid of some of these edges. And we now have a nice treatment on the outside of the wall here as if it was part of the trim.